DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. Hello and welcome to the PV Tech Newscast. The headlines this week, SunTech bondholders seek Chapter 7 bankruptcy proceedings. Research shows that PV demand could outstrip supply for the start of 2014. The EU fast-tracks grid and storage projects. And an arm of the World Bank launches a $250 million initiative aimed at helping PV service providers in developing countries. But first, struggling PV system supplier Centro Solar is seeking creditor protection via the local court of Hamburg. Having been in financial trouble for several years, the company is looking to restructure debts under the court's protective shield proceedings process and will continue operations during the three-month period allocated under the system. Their subsidiaries, Renosol, Centroplan and Centrosolar America are not part of the proceedings as they are fully financed and are operating profitably. Centrosolar noted that it had achieved revenue of 27.5 million euros in the third quarter of 2013 down 40% from the same period a year ago with a loss of 4.4 million euros. Total losses for the first nine months of 2013 stood at 18.2 million euros, according to the company. Having received court judgments on non-repaid loans from SunTech Power Holdings, some of the small bondholders are seeking Chapter 7 bankruptcy proceedings against the company. Chapter 7 bankruptcy is a winding up procedure, as opposed to a Chapter 11 bankruptcy, whereby companies attempt to restructure operations and continue trading. Court filings show that a few bondholders, including Trondheim Capital, are seeking payments of 580,000 US dollars after obtaining court orders confirming their legal rights to payment after Suntech previously defaulted on a 541 million US dollar convertible note earlier this year. Suntech has three weeks to respond to the claims. According to a research note from Energy Trend, a research division of Trendforce based in Taiwan, PV demand could potentially outstrip supply for the first quarter of 2014. Trendforce noted that with continued strong downstream PV demand into next year, current production levels of polysilicon can meet around 7.2 gigawatts of module shipments per quarter. However, Energy Trend estimates that demand of silicon wafers will be around 8 gigawatts or higher in the first quarter of 2014. Coupled with lower polysilicon inventory levels, there could be a squeeze on supply until idled capacity or new capacity built but not ramped can be brought online. PV demand in the first quarter is unusually strong due to changes in the feed-in tariffs in Japan and the UK at the end of the quarter and financial year. Energy Trend is forecasting that grid-connected installations are likely to reach around 28.6 gigawatts in 2013, while module shipments are likely to stand at around 33.3 gigawatts. The European Commission has announced a list of 140 electricity projects which will be fast-tracked and have access to a funding pot of 5.85 billion euros. The list includes several gigawatts of pumped hydro storage, a 250 megawatt battery storage system in southern Italy and a compressed air energy storage system in the UK with an annual storage capacity of 550 gigawatt hours. The projects have been given Project of Common Interest or PCI status which means they will have lower administrative costs, streamlined permitting procedures and the possibility of receiving funds from the Connecting Europe facility to leverage private and public finance. This could be available as early as next year. The compressed air storage technology uses excess energy to pump compressed air into underground caverns within old salt deposits. The air is pumped back out when demand grows and mixed with natural gas to turn steam turbines. The addition of the air halves the amount of gas required. Also on the PCI list are a number of grid connections including between the UK and Ireland, across the Adriatic, between France and Spain and between Greece and Israel via Cyprus. There is disappointment however that there are only two smart grid projects among the 140 listed. The International Finance Corporation, an arm of the World Bank, is planning to launch a new financing facility to pump prime PV development in emerging markets, PV Tech has learned. The initiative will make 250 million US dollars available for a number of PV service providers, PVSPs, special vehicles for developing small-scale PV projects in emerging markets. The PVSPs will primarily target 2 to 3 megawatt commercial rooftop and small ground-mounted projects in countries where the economics of PV compare favorably with grid or diesel generation, but where finance is difficult to access. 
The PVSPs will be responsible for identifying clients for whom a rooftop or small ground-mounted PV system for distributed generation makes sense and for assessing the financial strength of potential clients. They will then install, own and operate these systems and will collect payments over a pre-agreed period from the clients. Although the IFC has so far yet to formally launch the PVSP concept, the organisation is hoping to set up the first PVSPs over the coming year. Initially, the body is aiming for 10 PVSPs, although more will be considered if there is sufficient demand. As a member of the World Bank, IFC focuses exclusively on private sector activities in developing countries. And that's all for this newscast. Make sure you join us again next time on our new regular weekly slot on Tuesdays. And in the meantime, you can keep up to date with all the very latest news via our website and our Twitter feed. Thanks for watching.